the binary system. This is probably already familiar to you at least somewhat. You understand at least that computers work with ones and zeros. Suppose that we have a certain uh, frequency, 5 gigahertz, for example. Well, there's no 5 in a computer system. Computers have switches, and these switches can be on or off one or zero so there's no five here there's only a one and a zero so we use the binary system to represent different values in the computer by combining a bunch of ones and zeros because we only have switches to work with so let's take this combination of ones and zeros what is that combination to a computer well, it could be a lot of things. It could be a letter or some symbol. It could be a color, a number, a memory address, an instruction. How does it know? Well, it only knows by context. It knows based on what the instruction stream is. And the previous instruction says, for example, to add. Well, it needs to know next. The CPU knows that when it gets an add, that it needs to have a number next and then another number following that so it has some numbers to add so in that case it knows that it represents a number so it's all in the context in which it's used here are a few measurement terms or of course many more that we go into we don't do that so much in this course because i know that you do in some other courses uh, perhaps the 120 course and some of those a bit is a zero or a one a byte eight of those a kilobyte 1024 of these a megabyte is one uh, million one million forty eight thousand five hundred seventy six of these and a gigabyte of over a little over a billion of these now um, we do use 1024 and that's because with ones and zeros we can represent powers of two and 1024 happens to be a power of two so that's why we do that but here are a few notes that you should keep in mind. Normally, in normal science and, and math, kilo means a thousand, mega means a million, giga is a billion, and so on. So, thousand. In other words, powers of ten. Some writers then use kibby, mebby, gibby, and so on to represent 1024. So, you might see those listed that way. In sales, so let's say that they're selling a flash drive or a hard drive or a DVD or a CD, um, Blu-ray disc. These are usually measured in uh, the 1000 numbering system, not the 1024 numbering system. So you think you're getting a you know, 32 gigabyte flash drive and you plug it in, you're only getting like 30 something gigabytes. Well, that's because... Uh, they're measuring it uh, differently. Uh, a capital B always means bytes. A lowercase b always means bits. So don't get the two confused. Please don't use the wrong one. Uh, so when you're communicating, uh, we measure communications or speeds, for example, in bits, not in bytes. We measure storage in terms of bytes. So when we're communicating, you might talk about, uh, say, from Comcast, you're getting 150 megabits per second. And if you were to write on an ex on a uh, uh, assignment, 150 megabytes per second and with a capital B, you're probably about to lose some credit there because you're not getting 150 megabytes. That would be crazy amounts. That would be far faster than anybody else can even imagine getting. It's bits. Storage, however, is reported in bytes, not bits. Well, that's it then, except for one last little thing I want to mention. And that is that there are such things as analog computers. Analog computers do not use ones and zeros. They have different voltage levels. And a voltage coming out of one wire goes back through the circuitry, goes back in, uh, another port and then goes through some other circuitry and comes out on another wire as a different voltage. So these are analog and they have varying, uh, continuously varying, uh, and I should say infinitely number, uh, infinite number of variations of voltages that they can represent. And you can do some cool things with analog computers, 
But of course, that's not what we deal with mostly in this class. All right. Thank you for your attention.